Yesterday's been an absolute interesting day, isn't it? Right? I go to sleep, I wake up, and the whole fucking um, Twitter um, timeline is full of uh, Kanye West retweets and funny little memes. Absolutely hilarious. So I go to bed. And at a reasonable time, I'm currently reading uh, Who Who Rules the World by Noam Chomsky and The Flash Boys by Michael Lewis. So I've kind of got those on my mind. Go to sleep, a nice hour, wake up, go to the gym because I don't check test some nudity before I go to anything. I'm just going to go straight out. Come back and I check my stream, my fucking feed, and it's full of Kanye West stuff. So supposedly, not supposedly, but Kanye West um, had a bit of a meltdown on Twitter the other day, which is nothing, you know, no surprise really for anyone has seen the things that he's kind of uh, been up to this year. It's kind of been, it's been a weird year for Kanye, hasn't it? It's been, it's been on one end, it's been a quite uh, prosperous year. You know, it seems like he's got Yeezy, um, his um, clothing company, um, where it wa- he's got it where it wants it to be, right? Um, if you believe the reports, that's a billion dollar company. If you've seen how, um, how in general, like Yeezy Supply is like an incredibly slick website, uh, the drops have been quite frequent. Um, he's been he kind of he kind of uh, fulfilled the promise of making sure that he makes enough Yeezys for everyone to wear around the world. Um, you can pick up Yeezy 350s, you know, uh, without any sort of hassle online, which wasn't something that happened a few uh, years ago when they first launched. And everything's kind of hotting up, right? In that respect, um, um, him and Virgil have reconciled. Um, he 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 was basically um, responsible for the resurrection of Kid Cudi with Kid C Ghost. He was responsible for crafting probably one of the best um, uh, quintessential rap albums of this year um, in Doteno with Pusha T. And, you know, um, even though the Tiana Taylor rollout didn't work out the way that she would have liked and for the fans in general, we didn't get as much music as we wanted. He was also able to kind of contribute to that project and kind of um, be able to fulfill that promise in order to kind of get her project out on that side. So in, in some ways, it's been a quite fulfilled, fulfilled year for him and plus the, the birth of his child. Like it's been an absolutely great year. But on the other end, um, musically, he's kind of suffered um, his political well, music suffered because, you know, no one really talks about yay. For the most part, uh, Saint Pablo kind of has been and gone. Uh, Ye kind of went without causing any sort of, um, um, without kind of really causing any sort of shift in culture. Usually, with, it, with Kanye West albums, even if you like them or you don't, they always have a tendency to kind of shift the culture, change the conversation. But that didn't happen with his own album. Um, if anything, the best thing he's done is Kid See Ghost, which is a con- which is a collaborative album with Kid Cudi, or you could say it's a Kid Cudi album featuring Creature and Kanye West. And the best work he done with Pusha T, which was uh, Daytona, which Pusha T mentioned in a few interviews, was um, primarily due to the fact that he was on top of Kanye the entire time the album was 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 getting crafted. He didn't just disappear and come back and hope it was done. He was on top of him the whole time. So the reason why it sounds the way it does, and obviously his political stances haven't really enamored him to um, the the hip hop community on the whole. And then um, the other subtext of it is the continued drama with Drake, which has been, you know, weird to see because we don't really know what the truth is. We don't know whether or not it's the fact that, you know, um, supposedly um, that Scoopity Poop tune was meant to be given to Drake and supposedly Kanye West then finagled on that promise and released that parody of a song, which then Drake saw as a this, which came at the same time that uh, Pucci revealed his child was there. Blah, 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 blah. More gossip than I can handle in my own little head. But the interesting subtext to it which I think has been something that hasn't been said too often, is, um, which anyway, let's kind of go back in, in chronological order and see exactly what kind of ticked off uh, Mr. Kanye West. And the first thing that ticked him off as we see was supposedly he got a text message, it seems like, from a guy called Free, who I'm assuming is someone that's, that's um, part of good music or is part of Def Jam or something along those lines, right? So he's texting Kanye to let him know that supposedly someone on Drake's side is trying to uh, clear the sample for say what's is it say say what's real i think it's say what's real let me quickly check it out uh where is it 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 let me get this up here so i can see so here we go um so this tweet right is um a tweet from kanye west and he tweeted out this proves shit's faker than wrestling right so, <laughs> which is funny considering how much he's contributed to the whole drama. But he gets a text message from this guy called Free saying, Drake sent in a clearance request for Say What's Real. Do you want to clear? 
Now, um, the, the the backstory to this is supposedly that there's a 10th anniversary of uh, So Far Gone, right? Um, Drake's kind of seminal mixtape. Some might argue his best body of work that he's put together. And um, a lot's been kind of rumoured from the Drake subreddit I've seen that supposedly the 10th anniversary collection is going to be put together. That might include some vinyl. That might include a special 10th anniversary tour. That might include some special new features, a remastered version. We don't know, but it's, it's general they're trying to kind of reissue that um, the whole thing because I think they've got they've got so far was they've got so far so far gone on Spotify now and on iTunes but it's not the full 20 track which I've got which was released back in the day um, it's the full 20 track version of it I don't think they've got that I think they've got that sort of condensed version without probably the sample tracks on there so um, they're trying to release that again I would assume um, of course 10th anniversary and some extra coin in it in uh, the camp of OVO and um, I guess if you're Kanye West and you've got ongoing beef this is probably something that is a is a bigger topic if you've got beef with somebody but they still have your like i don't know if you had an argument if you if i if i lent some bluetooth speakers to my friend but me and my friend fell out or he let me his bluetooth can i ask for them back or do i just like you know or is that it is that it? am i am i am my speakers is done i'm not too sure some people probably argue that if it's yours, you get it back. Some people probably argue that if that person asks you through another through a third party, you should give it back. But I don't necessarily think that proves anything. But I think in in general, I guess in the music industry, clearing samples is kind of like um, I guess in 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 musical terms, it's a way of you kind of acknowledging uh mutual respect between artists. Like you might not work together. Right, you might not want to collab with the person, but you respect what they do and you clear the sample. I'm assuming that's what kind of that like is what goes on there. So um when people do clear sample, it's sort of like a nod, okay, yeah, me and you are cool. It's like a weird way of saying you're cool, even though you're not even though there's no evidence to show you're cool from the outside in because you haven't worked together, all that sort of shit. So I guess um for in Kanye's end, he's like, What the fuck? Like I don't even I don't even talk I don't we don't talk to each other or you don't talk to me, and now you want me to clear your sample. Like, go fuck yourself, right? Go spin on this, which is you know, which is clearly which is um more than more than um which he has a kind of, you know, he has he's justified in, t in doing so. And if you're and if you're Drake, I guess it's not necessarily you that's kind of reaching out to Kanye, right? It's your team that's kind of trying to put, trying to make sure all the samples are clear. We saw what happened with Juice World and Sting, right? They were going around um, touring or performing the song Lucid Dreams about uh, clearing a sample, and of course, uh, Sting decided to hit them, hit them where it hurts, <laughs> and pocketed most, if not all, the royalties on on that song. Luckily for Juice World. He's like a super talented um, artist who's able to kind of, you know, bounce back and make uh, another hit after that. But for the producer that made that song, you know, he's suffering because that might be his only hit. That might be his only chance to kind of blow, to kind of get some exposure. And now the song's kind of dead. Um, so I kind of I kind of get Drake's end of that regard. You know, you've you got to cover your bases. So it kind of escalates from there. Uh, Kanye is wiling out. What's he saying here? Uh... And then this tweet is kind of hit funny. <laughs> he says, uh, I still know this is, I still need to see, uh, let me see, show her. Now, still need that apology for mentioning 350s and trying to take food out of your kids' mouths, out of your idol's kids' mouths, which is fucking crazy, right? I think Kanye's got like, Kanye's underrated in terms of, um, how mean he can be, right? Because he said so many things in that kind of, uh, tweet. Right, he's mentioned that he needs an apology for you know. I think it's on No Stylist. Drake says, "Uh, uh, but girl, don't wear no fifties around me." And then in the same sentence, he's mentioning you're trying to take kid food out of, my, out of your idol's kid's mouth, which is insane, right? But you know, we all know the kind of respect Drake had for Kanye as an artist. But um, I guess when that kind of track came out, I think we all knew that the kind of you know the feud hadn't stopped. They still are not on good terms. But I guess. If you are Kanye, there is a, there is a, there is a, a an aspect towards this where you kind of do feel like Drake's trying to cancel you, right? Because I guess they've got a personal feud, which I, I, which I think, from what it seems like, as I'm looking in, it seems if Kanye West doesn't mind them having a personal feud, he just is ob objecting to the fact that he's being painted as, um, as a snake, right? Because he just want to leak the news that he, I don't know, he want to pass on info to push a T that Drake had a, a a child in secret, right? And then um now Kanye and now Drake is kind of hell bent in kind of ending uh Drake's dominance or Kanye's dominance in the footwear industry, right? By saying uh, checks over stripes, by mentioning that the, the girls are wearing the frequencies around me, right? He's trying to really pummel Adidas down into the ground, which which in you know which um in proxy 
or by association by default will then kill pusher will then kill uh kanye um interesting tactic in general I think if you're Kanye, you will be a bit upset if you hear that song, especially if it's the most played song around and French Montana is kind of retweeting it every four or five minutes. And I think him and Kanye are meant to be friends. It's just a strange thing. And I think it lends a lot of credence to what Pusha T said in his Joe Budden interview where he was kind of like, you know, ranting and raving or trying, just speaking very passionately about how he's a soldier, right? Like he's the, like, if someone's attacking Kanye, he's going to come out regardless and all guns blazing and attack that person because he's loyal to Kanye West. And he doesn't really understand how some other people within a camp are able to work with uh, Kanye's enemy, quote unquote, in Drake, and still be cool with Kanye. He doesn't get how that relationship happens. He says that's not something that he will do, and he doesn't. He doesn't, but he doesn't understand how they will do that. But he's not trying to like you know uh, speak for their actions. And it then goes. Then if you extrapolate that a little bit and you look a bit further out, you you see French Montana, who's like the friend of everyone. So you maybe can kind of discount him because he's like you know. He's like the most uh, sociable person in hip-hop and no one can really say he's, he's anyone's best friend in that regard, right? Um, he doesn't really have any loyalties to anyone apart from maybe his own little camp. But then you look at someone like Travis Scott who's kind of got, you know, one of his biggest tracks in sicko mode and you think to yourself, if you're Kanye and Travis allows Drake to jump on sicko mode and, I don't know, quote-unquote sneak this him, and that song is ringing out, uh, it's playing everywhere. It's one of the, you know, one, I think it's maybe number two in the Billboard charts or something or number one now maybe at, at, at the last time I'm speaking, you're gonna be you're gonna be a little bit put off, aren't you? If Travis, your you know, your quote unquote brother, is he a brother in law? I don't know what that means. If you're if you both got dates, so whatever it is, right? You're 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 from the same family, and he's you know he's he's festively got one of his biggest rivals on a track sneak this in you, and then if you extrapolate yourself further from the situation, you look out a bit nerdier, you would have seen that prior to Travis Scott album coming out, there was a loads of tweets that he put out he doesn't he's not really that kind of dude where he it seemed like he was throwing shade at Kanye he said he was kind of like you know saying some things that could have been contruded as like some things about like ah oh, don't idolize your idols not everyone's as they seem blah, blah 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 and this was during the time when Kanye was kind of wilding out of his kind of pro-Trump uh, stuff so there could be something around that it could be something around that. I'm not too sure if that's actually true but it could be something in it that now we know that the rumors of Travis uh not really fucking with Kanye might be true there might be some truth to it if we kind of extrapolate a little bit. If you kind of link those tweets that he spent, he kind of tweeted ages ago, and if you kind of see what's kind of transpired so far, if you link what Pusha T said about, he doesn't understand how some people from the camp can be working with Drake whilst the beef is still ongoing. Mm, doesn't seem too great, does it? So this kind of continued, it kind of rumbled on and on and on and on and on. I don't really want to go through every single fucking tweet on here, but the thing that kind of made me laugh and uh, really got me... Uh, going was that Kanye said he was going to buy the first two rows in Pusha T's uh, thing and then um, these series of tweets really kind of made me laugh right so you got this and this <laughs> so after kind of like baiting um, put Drake in public right um, with these tweets because he's been pretty quiet hasn't he Kanye he's been kind of under the radar and I think maybe he was kind of a bit annoyed that he wasn't being discussed in the conversation about best album all this sort of stuff so he just kind of had to come out and say something right Kanye just couldn't keep his fucking mouth shut so he was kind of bored and then of course he got the perfect ammunition in free sending him this text that supposedly uh, Kanye's trying to get something cleared and then we get this amazing 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 tweet right that comes out so let me let me just see this here show screen so the first one that really makes me funny right is this one <gasps> drake finally no no so here it goes but no drake finally called right then it goes mission accomplished <laughs> so if anything you could you could just taking that isolating that tweet it could be argued that maybe he was just trolling maybe he was just that desperate to get in the conversation with drake that he fabricated a text from free in order to kind of drake, get drake to reach out and then of course because i thought when i saw that tweet i was like there's no way in hell that conversation is going to go the way Kanye wants it to go there's no way drake's going to come on that phone and start being humble if if at all drake did call i don't we don't even know if he did call we don't know if this is just a figment of Kanye's imagination or if he's just or if he took somebody else from the team, we don't know what happened. But if that did happen, I'm pretty sure Drake would be on the phone talking all kind of madness, right? Because from what he said, and if you see what kind, if you see what Drake's, how Drake was talking about Kanye and the LeBron James barbershop thing, there is genuine, genuine, genuine dislike for Kanye now. Like what he's kind of like turned himself into. It's stuff to do with behind the scenes, stuff that we're not probably privy to. But it looks like they, re like Drake really doesn't like Kanye anymore, right? As a human being. 
And then if you extrapolate a bit further, you see that Don C and all those guys and Virgil are kind of hanging around with, with, with uh, Drake more and they've kind of distanced themselves from Kanye. They do talk about him in interviews and stuff, but for the most part, they don't really mention him. Don C hasn't said anything about Kanye since Don and Kanye kind of went like crying on that Chicago radio show about he hasn't got his friends around him. It seems as if like there is some genuine dislike of Kanye within his closest circle, within those people that kind of are his friends, right? So you can kind of imagine that phone call with Drake isn't going to go the way Kanye would want it to go in terms of like, oh, Drake kind of like, you know, bowing uh, to at his feet and sort of like uh, essentially kissing the ring. And then, and then, um, so that, may, that makes you think that maybe Kanye was trolling the whole way through. And then the final tweet, which kind of, um, kind of summarizes that whole occasion was this one that says, uh, by the way not cleared right so that effectively you know exactly what's happening there right so that it's just he is effectively trolling right so he, he didn't get the the response he wanted i'm sure drake was talking all sort of like wild mess on the phone and then kanye was like you know what fuck you i'm not clearing and again like i said to you previously i think that is the music industry's way of uh, um uh, if you clear a sample, especially if your person's not paying for the sample, it's a way of like saying we're cool, no worries. Do you know what I mean? I respect what you're doing, I respect the 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 the, the, um, the artistry. Maybe you might take a little bit off the back end, but for the most part, you're not trying to take fifty fifty or the whole track or the whole royalties like a uh, Sting did with uh, Juice World. And then um, to make matters even more interesting, right? Because if you know, you know, the, these things are even, it's always good, nice to kind of capitalize on a little bit of internet drama and kind of get involved in the muck without, you know, without kind of st uh, staining yourself. I decided, Agostino, this kind of brave creative soul out here, I decided it was a good idea to uh, create some merch that would kind of, you know, uh, resonate with the Kanye West crew. <laughs> so I decided to put together this quick little piece of merch that's available now on. Um, on Big Cartel, if you go to Twitter Meltdown, all one word, Twitter Meltdown.BigCartel.com, you can get yourself a bit of Kanye merch, um, a bit of, uh, by the way, not cleared merch, available now for £20. <laughs> I thought, why not, man? It's such a funny occasion to do. I thought, why not whack this up quickly and chuck this on the interwebs? There we have it. There we go. Um, you can check that out. I'll, I'll put a link available in the show description and in the audio link for you guys to check out as well. But it's available right now on Big Cartel. Get yourself some not cleared merch just for the lols, only for the lols. Um, and again, um, the tweets transpire again. It goes on and on and on. Kind of mentions, kind of mentions that's a, that um mentions the the kid that went to the Pusha T concert in Toronto and got fucking smashed to smithereens by security and Pusha's team. Supposedly that kid's on life support. Um, which is fucking nuts. I didn't know that. I don't again. I don't know if this is true. It's all kind of Kanye's mouth. Kanye insinuates that Drake was a guy. Drake was the one that got that kid um, to got that kid to, to go there and try to assault uh, push to the concert, which is fucking ridiculous. Really, someone of Drake's ilk is not gonna go and send some spotty teenagers to go and you know fight his battles. That doesn't make any sort of sense. But again. The, the war is getting messy the war is getting messy and if it didn't and if it wasn't getting any messy enough you know it's kind of going on and on and on what kind of made really everyone kind of stand up and take notice was the fact that um kanye west's wife kim kardashian decided to kind of get her voice involved too and she tweeted at drake directly they tweet at drake and said at drake uh here is a tweet here get it up there at drake never Threaten my husband or our family. He paved the way for there to be a Drake. Jesus Christ. So imagine, um, the one person who this whole beef kind of start kind of this whole beef kind of got a bit messy for was kind was Kim. The whole rumors that supposedly uh Drake was messing with her on the side whilst Kanye was going through his nonsense, which is you know a stupid fucking rumor that has probably no basis in fact whatsoever. But the fact that um both I mean the fact that um Drake's side Drake wasn't really uh, willing to kind of clear that up and kind of let the rumors roll kind of you know i'm assuming didn't really go down well with kanye and for the most part kim has kind of kept her head out of it but i guess you know in the kanye in a kim kanye household you can only imagine the amount of frantic shouting that's going on around there with this thing transpiring on twitter and it's an absolute mess of a situation again i think it's a it's a mess to see grown adults especially people with kids um putting out all their business on social like this it's never something that you want to do i think you want to cut yourself with a bit of class and I think, you know, it goes to goes to show, man, like for all the, you know, Jay, we've, we've only seen one chink in JJ's armor with that infamous lift situation, right? 
But for the most part, they've been able to keep um, a functional household under wraps without any kind of, without, you know, revealing the inner workings of their family, without kind of inviting the press or the media into it. Um, very, 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 very fucking well. And I think it just goes to show just how difficult it is to do. I think there is a tendency for people in the public eye just to always, always have themselves involved in some sort of public conversation just to keep them their name out there. And it's just, an, it's just frustrating to know and see, to see because for all the lows and for all the things like there's kids involved there's family members involved that have nothing to do with this there's people um connected with the camp start getting involved in this that also have nothing to do with this too who are going to get affected by this uh flagrant um disregard for anyone's kind of well-being and safety overall because these little things can just fester so much that they can kind of carry they can kind of build and build and build up into a moment where something real will happen and i think the push of t cut uh, Toronto thing is a good example yes Drake was not um, directly responsible for that kid going up on stage and doing what he did but that whole energy the whole out, um, you know the beef in general how it transpired the bad blood between them uh, the fact that both fans both sets of fans are in incredibly stanish they're on the Drake side and the Pusha T side it only made sense that if that happened and if push you decided to go forward with his date in toronto that there would be a section of the crowd who would take upon themselves to kind of back their dude which is fucking cringy as fuck if you don't know who drake, if you don't know drake personally and you're going uh to a push tea concert paying your hard-earned money queuing up buying a drink and then deciding to go throw it at an artist you're a fucking loser regardless but it can't you know it, it's no surprise that all that energy is going to kind of lend itself to the situation that we're in now in general everyone looks like a loser i think here kim looks like a loser Kanye looks like a loser drake looks like a loser everyone looks like a losers the quicker everyone kind of goes back to concentrating on music and doing what they do best in this industry the, the better for everyone in general um and i can't wait until it's over again it's a fucking amazing end of the year i think for the memes uh by the way not cleared i think it's gonna go on and on and on and um uh kim kardashian effectively copying and pasting her husband's tweet and then <laughs> adding it to drake is fucking hilarious um, uh, the fact that that whole Jenner household um, is essentially, you know, in Drake's pocket in some regard. Eh? You know, you're seeing videos of so and so members like playing Drake songs. It just must be. It's just such a shitty, mess, shitty, uh, mess, tacky situation. I don't even know where to begin. But anyway, that's that's it for me in general. It's kind of giving me a headache speaking about it overall, and that's half an hour of my life I've wasted. Um, but